What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start out with Tanner Bybee, who had seven Ks and seven and two-thirds innings, giving up only two hits and one run. He had these heaters, including this low one to Shohei. Shohei getting a little bit of that Aaron Judge treatment there. Bybee also had his nasty slider, but really relied on his changeup a lot more in this game, throwing 23 of them, getting a 38% whiff rate. Tanner Bybee was also my feature segment on Peacock. Ninja, great to see you once again. we got a lot to get to, so let's just start with Tanner Bybee. What can you tell us about him? Well, Tanner Bybee is another creation from the legendary Guardians pitching lab. His story kind of reminds me a little bit of Shane Bieber. Um, he wasn't a hard thrower in college, but had plus command. Now he tops out at 99 miles an hour. His key to his pitching is to stay birdie. He even has that written on his glove. Bybee's got good stuff, and I expect him to keep improving as the season goes on. He faced Patrick Sandoval, who went seven and two-thirds innings, giving up two earned runs, and had five strikeouts. He relied on his mix of fastballs, changeups, and sliders. Here are a couple of overlays of his stuff, his fastball and changeup, and fastball and slider. And you can see what makes those combos so tough. J.P. Sears had six Ks in five and a third innings, giving up two earned runs, and had these sweepers. And he faced Andrew Heaney, who went six innings with nine Ks, nice, and gave up only one earned run. Heaney's slider was outstanding. He had a 53% whiff rate on it for the game. Just wicked stuff. Jake Irvin started out pitching well, but then collapsed in the fifth inning. He did have six Ks and four and two-thirds innings, but gave up six runs. I thought his curveballs were really sharp. And here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball. And you can see why an elevated fastball-curveball combination is a nightmare for hitters. That elevated fastball basically covers for the curveball, making it harder to pick up. Irvin faced Max Scherzer, who had six Ks in five innings, giving up only two hits and one run. He had his usual mix of change-up sliders and fastballs. And if you ever wondered what makes Max a sure first ballot Hall of Famer, look no further than this overlay. Check out how well he repeats his mechanics on this. It's amazing. It almost doesn't look like those mechanics are overlaid. And then he tunnels his fastball and changeup so well. His consistent mechanics and tunneling ability is just one of the major reasons why Max has been so good for so long. Braxton Garrett had these sliders and cutters and fastballs on his way to eight strikeouts and in five innings, giving up only one run on three hits. He faced Luke Weaver, who had these nasty changeups and cutters on his way to six strikeouts and five and a third innings, giving up only one earned run. Hunter Brown had eight Ks in five and two thirds innings. He did give up three runs, but put on an absolute knuckle curve show in this game. And he had a 53% whiff percentage on that pitch for the game. And when that pitch is on, he's one of the best young pitchers in the league. He battled Lucas Giolito, who had six Ks in six innings. Gave up four runs, but three of them were really early in this game. He definitely battled. He had this fastball, and I love the little kick afterwards, like a kid kicking down bowling pins. And also had this slider. Kyle Freeland went six scoreless innings with eight strikeouts and gave up only four hits and relied on his wicked knuckle curves. His ERA this year is now 3.16. Zach Eflin relied on his mix of fastballs and curveballs and had eight strikeouts in six innings. He did give up four runs. And I also love the fact that Zach Eflin is a pitching ninja fan. Clark Schmidt had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings. He did give up seven earned runs, though. But he had flashes of nastiness with his sinker and curveball and this sweeper that makes Siri look like he's kind of sweeping after the ball with a broom. Tony Gonsolin had six Ks in five innings, giving up two hits and no runs. And he was really sharp with his mix of curveballs, fastballs, and splitters. Yusei Kikuchi had these fastballs on his way to 7 Ks in 4 innings, gave up 4 runs though. Brandon Fought had 5 Ks in 5 innings, giving up only 1 earned run, and had these sweepers and fastballs. He definitely looked much sharper this outing than his other two. And he battled Logan Webb, who had 3 Ks in 7 innings, giving up only 1 run, and had this changeup. Louis Varlin relied on his mix of fastballs and changeups, and had 7 Ks in 6 and a third innings, giving up 3 earned runs. Joey Wentz had this dirty curveball and had three Ks in two and two-thirds innings, giving up three earned runs. 
and he faced Logan Gilbert, who had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings. He did give up three earned runs and really wasn't particularly sharp this game. He did have these elevated splitters, though. Kyle Gibson had this sinker and changeup on his way to five strikeouts in five innings, giving up four earned runs. And he faced off against yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher, Mitch Keller. Mitch Keller had 13 strikeouts in seven innings, giving up no runs and only four hits. He threw 75% strikes for the game and had amazing fastball command, painting with up to 98 miles an hour, hammer curveballs, and then this sweeper that broke 21 inches. Look how absurd this pitch is. I overlaid it with Keller's fastball just so you can see how much movement that sweeper had. Keller's ERA is now down to 2.38, and he is absolutely a budding ace. I had predicted him as the breakout star last year, and I guess I was just a year off. Just incredible stuff from Mitch Keller. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Brian Abreu had this slider and 99-mile-an-hour fastball. David Bednar had these heaters. Jesse Chavez got the KO on this changeup. Referee Steve Willis, count him out. Justin Brule had these filthy sliders. Check out the movement on these things. Jason Adam had the reaction of the day. Adam 100% absolutely thought this was a bomb off Aaron Judge's bat. My man almost had a heart attack out there. And said, wow, to his catcher. Another wow. Colin Holderman had these sweepers. Jose Ruiz caved the side with his curveballs and fastballs. Alex Lang had this wicked changeup and curveball. And remember, you got to respect the turtleneck. Ron Marinaccio had this nasty changeup. Trevor Richards had this filthy changeup. Jose Leclerc had this dirty slambio. And my filthiest pitch from a reliever yesterday, or prettiest pitch, was this screwball from Brent Honeywell. Look how gorgeous that is. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Check out this 12-6 action by Michelangelo. And Jason Benetti's call of this cracks me up. You got Michelangelo there. Oh no! Oh, oh no! No! Oh. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Pablo Lopez for 6Ks or more. Take Fromber Valdez for 7Ks or more. And top it off with Shohei Otani for 8Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 